This is section 5.5, the substitution rule, and our first objective is to recognize the chain rule after it's already been used and then go backwards with an integral. So I'd like you, when we're done, to be able to explain the method you use to go backwards and then use the chain rule in your explanation. So let's revisit the chain rule from section 3.5. If I take the derivatives of each of these, I know that I have to encounter the outer function first because chain rules deal with composed functions. So the derivative of cosine is going to be simply sine negative of the inside unchanged and then I'll multiply by the derivative of the inside. If I take the derivative of this one, I would get e first, which leaves things alone, and then I'd multiply by the derivative of that sine of x. If I take the derivative of the next one, I see that outer function is a power function, so I bring the 5 down, leave the inside unchanged, raised to the fourth, and then I multiply by the derivative of the inside. If I look at my last one, I'll take the derivative of the power first of the inside unchanged, raised to the fifth times the derivative of that inside. Lastly, if I take the derivative of this one, I'm going to get the outer function's derivative at the inside unchanged times the derivative of the inside. So if I look at this and think about going backwards, which is our whole goal, is we want to identify the pattern so that we can go backwards. We're looking at what the antiderivative of negative sine of 5x squared times 10x with respect to x might be. And if we look at that, we can see that we have an outer function here, which is the negative sine, and then we have the inner function, that's the 5x squared, and then we have the derivative of that inner function. So let's see if that happens on the next one. We have that outer function, which was e to the sine, so the big outer function was an exponential, and plugged into that exponential, we had a sine function, and the derivative of that sine was at the back. So if I go backwards, remember that they're inverses of each other, I could write that the antiderivative of this should be that cosine of 5x squared, plus some random constant. So let's see where that comes into play. The red outer function was a negative sine, and the antiderivative of a negative sine is a positive cosine. And notice that the inside of that derivative was a 5x squared, so the inside of the antiderivative is also a 5x squared, and we lose that derivative of the inner function when we take the antiderivative. If we do it again here, antiderivative of e to the sine of x times cosine, well we know already that the answer is e to the sine. The reason we know that is because if I go backwards on an exponential, it stays the same, and that inner function's antiderivative we don't have to worry about because its cosine of x was already here. So if we go backwards on this next one, let's see if we can do it a little faster. We have a 5 ln of x raised to the fourth. Well, there's that power rule. So my outer function is, how do I go backwards on 5 times something raised to the fourth? And hopefully you see that that's just going to be whatever was in there raised to the fifth, because I'd add 1 to this power and divide by 5 and notice that the inside is going to stay the same. Notice too that I do not need to write the antiderivative of that inside because it was already had its derivative inside. So I could double check 
each of these antiderivatives as being correct by taking the derivatives, and I'd end up with that inner function again. So let's fast forward to where we don't have the answer in front of us already and see if we can go backwards. Remember that we are looking for an outer function and an inner function whose derivative is inside the integral. So here I can see that 8x cubed is inside the integral, and I can see that its derivative is also in the integral. Here I can see that ln of x is inside a power, and I can see that the derivative of that ln of x is also in there. Here I see that a tangent is inside an exponential, and I see that the derivative of that tangent is also inside. I see that this polynomial is inside a power, and its derivative is also inside. And lastly, I see that a u is trapped inside, and its derivative is also trapped inside. So if I want to go backwards, I now need to look at what those inner functions were inside, because I'm going to go backwards on the outer function. So I have to answer the question, what did I take the derivative of that gave me this stuff in the red box? What do I go, what do I take the derivative of with respect to x that gave me cosine? Well, that's going to be the sine of whatever was inside the function to begin with. If I go to the next one, what do I take the derivative of that gives me 6 times something raised to the 5th? Well, that's going to be whatever was inside raised to the 6th power. And the inside stays the same. With my next one, what do I take the derivative of that gives me e's to things? How do I go backwards on an exponential? Well, that's e to something plus a c, and whatever was inside the function in the integral will be inside the function on the antiderivative. We look at this last one here. Again, it's a power rule, so I will have whatever was in there raised to the 2 plus 1 is 3, divided by 3 cancels that one, plus a c, and the inside stays the same. Lastly, if I finish this one, I will end up with just an f, because the antiderivative of f prime of its inside unchanged. So hopefully you see a pattern here, and we're going to be able to do the next set without quite as much work, even if we ramp up the difficulty. So let's remind ourselves of the chain rule. If I have two functions composed, then the derivative of this will be the outer function's derivative at the inside unchanged, times the derivative of the inside. So if I want to go backwards on this, then what did I take the derivative of with respect to x that gave me f prime of g times g prime? Well, that was f of g plus c. So we're seeing those inner functions in there with their derivatives at the back, and the inner function stays when we do the antiderivative of the outer function which was f prime, so its antiderivative is f. So let's look at this one, and now the integrands are a little bit more challenging. We want to look for an inner function whose derivative is also in the integral. So we can see that an x cubed plus 2 is going to have a derivative of a 3x squared. So we'll have the outer function is 1 over that inside function. So the antiderivative, we have to think about what is the antiderivative of things that give me 1 over an inside? Well, that hopefully you'll remember is ln of the inside. Here we can look at cosine as being my inner function. The reason that's a good choice is because its derivative, negative sign, is in the integral, so we know that was a good choice for our inner function. And again, we're left with a 1 over 
the box, or 1 over the inner function. So its antiderivative will be the log natural of the absolute value of that inner function. The next one's a little tricky because we can see that this x cubed and the 3x squared are kind of connected, but the problem is, is we don't know how to go backwards when we have a 1 over e to things. We only know how to go backwards when we have e raised to power. So if we choose this to be our inner function, we've got to somehow get that e up in the top. So we're going to do that here by rewriting this as e to the negative x cubed times a negative 3x squared. Now when I do my antiderivative, I can see that my inner function is that negative x cubed. Its derivative is inside the integral. That means I only need to go backwards on the outer function. So how do I go backwards on e to things? Well, it's just e to the same thing plus c. If I look at my next one, my inner function appears to be this x cubed plus 3, but the problem is, is that the derivative of that is not here. It's close, but we're off. The derivative of this is a 3x squared plus 3, so I'm missing a factor of 3. So what I can do is rewrite this as a 3 over 3, and then I have that inner function with a constant of 1 third that would come out in front. Now I can put a box around my inner function. I can see the derivative of my inner function there, and my outer function is e raised to a power. And we know by now that going backwards on e's just leaves things alone. So that inner function stays the same. Lastly, if we look here, we can see that my inner function is going to look like what's inside a root, and its derivative is 8x. So we have that same issue. We don't have an 8x, we've just got an x. So we're going to insert an 8 and an 8 so that we haven't changed the value. We've merely changed how it looks. And then we're going to rewrite this so that we recognize the outer function. Because remember, the outer function is what's left over other than the green stuff. So if I rewrite this, I'll get a 1 8 of an integral of a 4x squared minus 3. I'm going to be going backwards with a power rule. And we can see our inner function there with its derivative also in the integral. And then the outer function is that power rule. So remember with chain rule going backwards, we just have to undo the outer function. So the outer function, I will add 1 to that power, and then divide by a half, and then add c. And we can't forget the 1 eighth that's currently out there. Now most people get a little confused with this, so I want to see if you can do your notes web exam problems and get them correctly, and then we'll look at objective two.